There could be one of many reasons why you clicked on this video, but I'm guessing you want to run a faster marathon. A better marathon, yeah? Now, in one of my marathons, I was chatting to a guy in the first mile, as I often do if you've seen my videos in previous times. And what I was saying to him in terms of what I was about to do, he said it took him 13 marathons to work out. 13! So you can either watch this video all the way through where I'll share, share with you what I do, what I've done, how I've learnt it, or you can maybe switch off to another video and take another 13 marathons to work it out. The choice is yours. My name is Donato, England Marathon Master and currently England 10K Masters Qualifier, which I'll be racing very soon in the next few weeks. I'm very much looking forward to that. So I'm going to share with you what I've learned, how I took 31 minutes off my marathon time in just six months. 31 minutes in six months, yeah. If you said that to me when I ran that uh, first marathon in 346, 48, and then you said to me, oh, in six months time, you'll be taking 31 minutes off that time, I would have said, you're crazy. In fact, maybe even certifiable, is that a word? So if you are new to my channel, I would dearly love you to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that alarm bell, because it really does help this channel considerably to spread out across the YouTube world, and it doesn't cost you anything. And for those of you who are returning subscribers, a warm welcome back. Yes, you're going to be watching all the way through, aren't you? Yeah, I know. Alan, John, James, Samantha, Helen, you, you're all going to watch all the way through. I know, because you really want to know what's the magic source or secret source. Yeah, we often hear these videos. What's the secret source that people have? What's, I mean, we have seen videos and there's a plethora of videos out there, blogs and so on. Don't do what I did. Yeah, if I even produce one of those because it's quite popular. Yeah, because people want to learn what not to do. In this video, I'm going to show you what to do or what I did. And if you want to implement that, fantastic, because I, I always give my caveats. There may be some things that I'll discuss in this video that may not work for everybody because we are all different. But on the whole, I have seen this particular what I do what I've learned from other people, professional coaches, some of the best in the world, and I'll be sharing that information with you. And by imparting that knowledge and info, you can do that whatever you wish. You can share this with others and they can learn also, or you can just forget it and go on to the next video. And maybe try, I don't know, one of the other popular videos is how I ran a marathon with no training. Yeah, mm. All I can say about that is, ouch! Yeah, yeah, not just the actual race itself, but after the race, the days, the weeks, the months of recovering. Yes, because that's what you'll probably take. As I mentioned earlier, we often hear of what's the secret source, magic source? Is it some kind of Harry Potter potion? Is it a Lord of the Rings magic ring that we wear? Yeah, is it one of those? Hmm, nah. Is it some kind of magic shoes? Do you need to buy some super duper latest greatest shoes that maybe act like some kind of pogo stick or don't act like a brick type thing that weigh you down? Nah. Is it some kind of magic nutrition? Secret nutrition that we have to take? Is there some kind of gel that we need to take? Or is there some kind of energy blocks? Drinks, nutrition, mm. nah. What about some kind of magic training? Do we need to do some magic training for the next 16 weeks? Do we need to do hill reps? Do we need to do Kenyan hills? Do we need to do 24 mile long runs? Some people do 26.2 mile long runs. Do we need to do that? Nah. What about some kind of magic sleep? We often hear we need to do some kind of magic sleep potions. There's something in the air that we need to do. Yes, we need good sleep all the way training, but is there some kind of magic fix it all type of sleep? Nah. So you're probably wondering if none of those work. By the way, leave in the comments below. I'm sort of jesting a little with you all about uh, some of those. Some of those can help, yeah? 
but I'm talking about the single most effective thing that can really help you run a fast amount which helped me take over 31 minutes off in six months. Do you know what it is? Come closer, closer, closer. Don't tell anyone this, right? But it's race day strategy. Oh, what? It's just what you do on the day. Race day strategy. But not only race day, I'm not talking about breakfast, recovery. I'm talking about when the gun goes off and you start your 26.2. <laughs> This is insane! There's two things of race day strategy. One which I'll do in a subsequent video to do with nutrition. <laughs> Why is it whenever I talk about food, sometimes there's something that reminds me about food. But yes, the nutrition that we take during the race. It's essential that we get our hydration, and energy intake correct, but it's based on the strategy that we're applying. I'm talking about pace strategy, effort strategy, whatever you want to call it, heart rate, whatever it is. And I have mentioned it in the previous 119 days to go weekly series. If you're not following that, check the link below and join in with that series where 119 days of training, what we go through to reach our marathon day. But it's what we do when the race starts. And in one of those videos, I mentioned the magic six, yeah? Which a number of you asked questions about that. Someone left a comment, well, what, what, what's that all about? The magic six, it's the first six miles of the race. That first six miles, what you do in that first six miles determines what happens in the next 20.2. So you could say maybe the first 6.2, and then what happens in the last 20, whatever. Anyway, that's what I was saying to a gentleman during the beginning of Malaga Marathon in the first mile. We were just going at an easy pace and I got chatting with him. And as you've seen in my videos, I get chatting with a lot of people during marathon, especially the first 20 odd miles. After that, it's a bit of hang on for a lot of people and they don't want to talk to me, which is understandable. Yeah. I mean, who'd want to talk to a guy running with a GoPro and there's about six miles left of a marathon and you're absolutely, oh. yeah. Anyway, I said to him, it's always good to start easy, slow, and then slowly pick it up. And he said to me, he says, yeah, it took me 13 marathons to work that out. It took him 13 marathons to work that out. We were running together and taking it easy. We were looking at similar times, similar finishes, so we were running together. Now, you're probably asking, well, what's an easy pace for the first six miles? But in terms of the strategy, if I was to plan it out, the first six miles, 10K, 10K, yeah? When I came to Frankfurt Marathon, which was the marathon where I'd improved over 31 minutes from Brighton, six months earlier in April. So Frankfurt came in October. I had a professional coach at the time, and he gave me this strategy yeah, and I've picked it up with other people. I've finally tweaked it with a few things as well, but the key one, this never changes. It's almost like it's it's written in stone. Yeah, now for some people, I do appreciate there are people out there who can go out even paced, fantastic, yeah? But for the majority of us, yeah, because I didn't start whilst I mentioned at the beginning, I'm an England marathon masters running at what you might call for my age at elite level. I by no means ever started that way. No, no, no. So don't look at where I am right now. Look at where I've come from and how we've progressed to where we are. That first six miles, I know, again, I appreciate people do even splits, but it's very rare. Most people, it's a negative split or we hope for a negative split, but what often happens is the latter part of the race, we start to fatigue and tire. How much we fatigue and tire is determined by what we do in the first 10K, the first six miles. Yeah, I'd love to hear your comments below if you agree or disagree with this, or if you implement similar strategies. That in a nutshell is it. I'm gonna go through a little bit more detail what you can do to implement it if you wanna kick on and do an even faster time. So as I mentioned, the first six miles we go easy, 
what that pace is, how many seconds slower per mile per kilometer, you need to work out for yourself. But for me, when I was running the three hours and 15 minutes, 14 seconds, three hours 15, the first 10K, the coach said to run between 48 and 50 minutes, which sounded really slow for me. And I, I think I hit that basically on the nail on the head. It was about, uh, yeah, it was almost about 50 minutes, I think. I'd done the first 10K. And then he said, kick on. That's all he said, kick on. But don't go too fast, yeah? So the first 10K, I'm all water, gel, I think I had a glass of water. Oh, yeah, it's 10K, right, let's go. Now, thankfully, frankfully, Frankfurt, thankfully in Frankfurt, uh, as it's Germany, Europe, the markers are kilometre markers, yeah? Um, I don't recall mile markers, I think it was just kilometre markers, so I saw the 10k marker and kicked on. And then I saw this guy, and I was looking, uh, I always ask people, what pace are you on for, what are you looking to do? And he said, three, uh, it was about 3.09 he was going for, and I went, oh, oh, that's way too quick, so I slowed it down, slowed myself down and let him pull away. And I thought, right, let's just go at this pace and held that pace. Now, what you can do, if you feel you've got the energy when you get to mile 20, you can either kick on and push quicker if you feel you've got the energy for that, or stay at that pace. Or for some people, it's a case of hang on still, because whatever happens, however we've paced it, those last six miles really do determine the time that we're finishing in terms of my times, you know, to run that 3.15, I never really looked at pace. I never look at me watch. And I guess that might be another tip if you're looking for some kind of magic potion. Don't, don't be looking at the watch because it can put pressure. So for me, having done 15 marathons and soon to do London Marathon now for the fourth time in person for me, this will be, can't wait, can't wait. Hopefully this information has helped you in some way and gleaned some knowledge and hopefully it's entertained in some way as well, because I like to take things a bit light, yeah? Light-hearted, because without humour, where are we? If we can't laugh at ourselves, who can we laugh at? So thank you so much for watching, tuning in. As I said, if you had found this useful and you want to share it with your friends, then please do. So if you are new here, please do give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that alarm bell. I look forward to seeing you at the next video, where I'll be sharing the nutrition, you know, how to work out what works well for us in terms of nutri nutrition during the race. Bye 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 bye. <laughs>